Hello and welcome to the show. For this week's Fair Racer vs. the Community, we were going racing with A-Class front wheel drive cars, which means plenty of wheel spin. You kind of had two ways of going with the cars. Either you put race tyres on them, tried to make them handle, or you went for a lot of power. Most people opted to go for the handling route, which was the sensible route. A few of us, me included, went for the power route, and that was rather difficult. This, uh, this first race was at the Silverstone GP circuit, and yes, indeed, there was a limo in the mix. Limos got really really damn high power which was uh yeah an interesting thing to go up against because the limo is very difficult to overtake and when the limo is as fast as this one was in a straight line it's a bit of a nightmare to have to try and deal with we're gonna go three wide down the bottom of the first straight the little fiat is uh, no match for the giant cadillac limo although has got so much more grip through the corners the cadillac gonna get stuck out wide the astra will lead this group will manage to get himself clear of that limo here here comes that 695 on the inside there. Three wide further back as well. <laughs> down towards or across the old start finish line. The Astra's getting a little bit swamped down the straights. As first, the uh, Dodge, the Neon, moves himself up a position. Then the Mini wants to try and get through. They're still going three wide with the limo further back. The limo uh, will uh, fend off some cars for a little while. Mini is past focus would be very much on the move. The Ford, in fact, was ridiculously quick around here, managing to round up the Mini on the final corner. Was going hunting after that Dodge. The Dodge, decent amount of straight line speed, but going to struggle through these tighter corners and a bath is up on two wheels. Manages to keep it all together. The Focus fires up the inside, can't pull it up in time. The Mini gets the pair of them. It's a brilliant, brilliant piece of overtaking from the Mini to get both cars at turn three. Unfortunately for the Dodge and the Ford, a collision that we see many times. The uh, front corner getting caught on a rear corner. Neither car can steer out of it. No massive losses, just a bit of time for the pair of them. I was stuck in the limo train. Now, my Civic was relatively powerful, some 520 horsepower V6 in this, and there's a lot of power going through the front wheels. I could just about outrun anything in a straight line, except one car, and that one car was the limo, and could I find my way past it? No, I could keep getting into the perfect position and then we'd come to a straight and then the limo would go soaring past. I could outrun the minis and the Shelby or the Omnis and the Astras and so on. I could outrun them no problem when it came to the straights, but I couldn't get past the damn limo. It was such a difficult thing to overtake because my Civic did not handle well. My Civic was yet yeah, not particularly good through these corners, so I just couldn't find a way past. I was trying to throw it around the outside into the fire chicane. Wasn't going to work and the problem is in doing all of this I'd cost myself a fair bit of time now the limo's got a bit of margin over me I'm coming under fire from the Astra the minis involved the uh, Omnis coming to joining the group as well it was yeah a mad group good fun group to be a part of further up towards the front it was a little bit more spread out this the battle for fourth place the uh, 695 uh, up on two wheels again spent a lot of time up on two wheels also the terrible replay cameras i think they're getting worse around silverstone um <laughs> The, the, the Abarth uh, up, on its, up on its side through Baggers of is a brilliant, brilliant uh, attempt for position from the Mini. It's really difficult to go around the outside of those corners. Almost manages to make it stick. Unfortunately, it would have been a good scrap. The uh, Abarth would lag out in the middle of the fight, which, yeah, is a little, little bit of a shame because that was, that was shaping up to be a really, really good tussle. The Mini had got past the pair of us, and I was still staring solidly at the back of the Cadillac. I couldn't make a pass stick. Every time I got uh, close enough, we'd get to a straight, Cadillac would run away, and then I'd spend all of my time through the corners closing up, but never be close enough to get a pass. And Overtaking a limo is very difficult because there is so much car to physically have to try and get past. I was throwing it across the curb at turn one. I was getting my Civic up onto two wheels. Because my Civic didn't even have race tyres. That's not a bad feat for the car. Trying to go around the outside of turn three. That's not going to work. The uh, Omni gets both of us up the inside there. Not that I was that worried about the Omni getting past. I know how much speed my Civic had in comparison to that uh, Shelby. So as we head on towards the first, not even a massively long straight. I know the 
Civics got the speed. I'm past the Cadillac, but I know the Cadillac's got the speed on me as well. Gonna go three wide down the back straight. The Cadillac to the inside is all a little bit scary through here because the Cadillac's not got the grip. <laughs> Cadillac understeers out towards me, but uh, we keep it all on the track. It's a bit of a squeeze. The Omnis now found himself on the inside through the next corner and will retain the position. Again, it's another drag race down towards the old start finish line. But it's a drag race we're always going to have troubles against. That uh, <laughs> mighty limo. We're closing very rapidly onto the back of the Omni. However, this time around, he is well, he's able to get to the corner. Runs it a little bit too wide through the corner, trying to fend off the hordes of scary fast cars. And then we're going to swamp the Omni. But unfortunately for me, I'm stuck going the wrong way. And the limo's back ahead. Into Maggots and Beckett's. I don't have the grip to fight. Well, I, I have more grip than the limo, but I don't have enough grip to go around the outside of the limo at this particular section. And the Omni stuck trying to go around the outside of us almost makes it work, even if it had worked for him. He ends up out wide across the grass. Even if we'd kept it there, we would have just blasted past him down the straight regardless. A good fun battle. Frustrating. Frustrating. We're going to get the back of the limo. Towards the front of the race, third place, the focus was uh, catching up to the Abarth in second relatively quickly. This focus mighty, mighty quick. For, uh, for an A-Class car in general, let alone a front-wheel drive vehicle. Not quite as fast as the Abarth down the straights, but carried so much speed through the corners. Could put the Viposto under continual pressure. It's up the inside into the final corner. It's not the easiest of places to overtake. You don't necessarily see that many overtakes there, but the Focus has just so much more grip than everything that uh, he can get a pass done. And that would, yeah, put him to second with not too long to chase down the leaders. Guess what group was still having uh, interesting fights? Uh, the rest of the field was relatively spread out. There wasn't a huge amount going on at this stage of the race. Our little trio here were having the most entertaining of battles. Still, I looked for any which way I might be able to get past the limo. Again, having a look around the outside of turn three. I keep my vehicle further alongside this time around. It's still not quite enough to get the move finished, although I know I can run the limo out wide. For once, the Omni is helping me out this time around because the Omni sneaks up the inside and forces the limo to have to try and go wide. And the Omni also helps work as a block as we head down the straight because the limo can't get across immediately to the inside. That means I can defend in towards the next corner. I run very, very deep under brakes. I do not want to uh, give the limo any opportunity to get back past and I can get myself defensive around the next long corner leave there no space for that limo to have a look up the inside and i have just about enough acceleration in the civic to fend off the limo if i can get ahead of the limo if i can stay ahead of the limo into the next corner i know i'll be good because i'll be faster through maggots and beckett's and sure enough the cadillac just can't quite do anything finally on the final lap i would get the civic past at the front of the field, the focus had actually got himself into the lead on this final lap, although it was far from a done deal as the CRX was fighting back and the Ford runs too deep into Maggots and Beckett. Uh, amazingly, manages to uh, rejoin the circuit, very, very narrowly avoiding the CRX, but everybody gets through it cleanly as they start fighting. They've slowed each other down significantly and the Abarth has come to join in the fun. Only a few more corners to go. The focus now having to defend from that fear to the run down towards the next big braking zone. This is where the Ford is going to be quick. The CRX, pretty damn good acceleration. Decent straight line speed. Is able to get himself that little bit of a margin over the Ford that's all important into these final corners because we've seen how good the Focus was. The Honda, very, very defensive on the way in. The Focus tries to go around the outside. Rush runs out of road. There isn't going to be space to fit your car there. He clips the tyre bundle. Ends up being slowed down. There is not going to be the room for the Focus. It is a very, very close uh, group for the uh, top three, but the CRX would take victory over the Focus with the Abarth coming home in third. I think the Mini was fourth, followed by the uh, Dodge. The Neon actually did pretty well getting up into fifth place. It was a random demon with the uh, CRX to take a victory ahead of him. Pegas Focus with EVR Liam T in third with that Abarth. Our second race, and we would head to Yas Marina, the north layout of the circuit. And I thought we'd set it to no. We don't do too many, too many night races, and this is one that we can use. My capture card's being a little bit weird. I can't quite figure out why, so I apologise for the uh, slight extra darkness that we have going on with this one. It's 
yeah, I, I don't know. It looks alright on my screen when I'm physically recording it, but then the video clips themselves are very dark. It's weird. It's weird. Either way, <laughs> it is a relatively clean start for everyone. A Hyundai Veloster would lead the way for a Ford Focus and a Lancia Fulvia in third as we head in towards the chicane for the first time. Again, also apologies for the liveries not loading on the vehicle. Sadly, that is, yeah, still, still persistent. As we sort of filtered our way through the chicane, the Veloster ended up having to jump the curb to avoid uh, sort of a, a collision, ended up out very wide to sort of try not to gain an advantage. It's all three wide as we head down the um, long, long back straight. Now, this straight will be uh, nice for the cars with the power, with the straight line speed cars like my Civic, for example. Uh, However, there are still some technical sections for those cars to have to try and deal with. You need a good balance around here. The uh, Veloster tries to make it stick around the outside of the Fulvia. In the end, couldn't quite make that one all work. It is now coming under huge pressure from my very, very fast Civic in a straight line. Uh, there's another limo in this one. Not quite as fast as the limo at Silverstone, but still fairly fast. Down the uh, straights, another CRX trying to go around the outside of turn one. I couldn't quite carry enough speed around the outside to make that pass work. The limo's making life awkward for me as the Veloster can uh, scamper away a little bit with that uh, third position. As ever, a fairly hectic start to the race as cones get spat out everywhere across the track. At the front of the field, while we all fought over third place, it was a little bit more calm for <laughs> Focus and Fulvia that led the way. Focus, the quicker car, in a straight line and could make the most of that advantage down the one long straight. The Fulvia, better through the corners, and the Lancia, very, very quick accelerating. The Fulvias are incredibly, incredibly light, and they get massive accelerations out of any of the corners here. As we see, leaving the hairpin, the Fulvia's got the drive, he's got the acceleration to pull alongside the Focus. However, it just runs out of power, runs out of straight line speed down this uh, in <laughs> it's an incredibly long straight for, well, for just about anything that races uh, around this circuit, and it'll be enough to keep the focus ahead for now. It's a really tough braking zone at the end as well. So easy, so easy to make a little mistake, either break way too early or break way too late and lose a whole heap of positions. It's, yeah, <laughs> a tough a tough corner to get right lap after lap because a couple of metres will make a really, really big difference. The Fulvia gets a good run around the final corner and is still looking for a way past the outside of turn one is never quite likely to work. Well, aren't you? I think it goes for a cutback to the inside, but there's a focus and far too much focus in the way to get that one to work. The uh, limo was not doing too badly in this race. It was holding on to about fifth, sixth position at this stage, having good straight line speeds to fend off the cars down the long straight, but not quite as much straight line speed, interestingly, as my Civic and was coming under increasing uh, threats from a uh, Acura that was much better through the corners. But as we're seeing <laughs> time and time again, it is so difficult. It is so difficult to pass a limo just because of the sheer length of the car, the sheer wheelbase, the amount of vehicle that you have to get past before you can get an overlap and complete a, a complete a position is very tough. However, it does help massively when said limo makes a mistake. It's the easier way to get past the limo, wait for him to eventually run out of grip and then sneak past up the inside and that put the RSX up a position. Uh, further back, this was a fight for around 15th place between <laughs> two Hondas and a Duke. And this fight would actually rage on for pretty much the entirety of the race. Yeah, they were a fair way down the order, but they were still having, you know, vehicles to race against. The Duke had the straight line speed of, well, straight line speed over the CRX. Didn't have the straight line speed of the Civic, however, was better handling than the Civic, whereas the CRX was better handling them, all of them. As we head to the hairpin at the end of the straight, the Duke really struggles to pull the car up in time. It's a little bit wide. CRX is going to fight back. Can't quite, though, draw alongside. Tiny just bumps on the back of the Duke and the CRX gets a little bit bounced around. The Honda tries to carry more speed at the final corner, ends up out wide. Uh, not particularly where you want to be. It's quite a nasty bouncy curb over there that you can end up stuck upon. I was up into a third place and released from the massive battles was chasing down the top two. The focus had pulled away a little bit at the front and I was looking for a way past the Fulvia. Now, 
I knew I couldn't do much about it when it came to these corners. The Fulvia was significantly faster, and in fact the CRX behind me was significantly faster through these corners. My main goal was just to be neat and tidy, don't make any silly mistakes. My Civic wasn't easy to drive. In all honesty, it wasn't a particularly great car, certainly not the vehicle I am proudest of building. However, I knew where it was going to be strong. Now, I said don't make mistakes, still managed to run a little bit wide out of the chicane. However, still got across to cover the inside from the uh, CRX. Now, the Fulvia will get that initial acceleration on my Honda. I know there's nothing I can do about that, but further down the straight is where we're going to start reeling that Lancia back in. And then it's all about the braking. You've got to make sure that uh, you get the vehicle stopped for the corner, but you want to be as late on the brakes as you possibly can. The Lancia was actually a little bit early, allowed me to get past, and the CRX would be a more than happy to buy into all of that. The Honda up into third, my Civic would now have to go chasing down the leader. Unfortunately for the rest of the field, not a huge amount would happen in the closing stages. The CRX would get past me, and as we headed on to the final lap, the CRX was looking for a way past the focus. The Honda was having a lot of issues around uh, turn one. I think almost every lap the uh, CRX would go understeering off at the first corner, costed himself time. My Civic was now trying to buy in around these very, very quick corners. Now, this helps the focus, because he doesn't have just a single car trying to attack him. He's only got to worry about defending, whereas the CRX has got to worry about attacking and defending. I've got to worry about attacking and defending because the Fulvia and caught back up to this group as soon as we start fighting. The Focus gets a big, big slide through the uh, chicanes that ends up with uh, him being fired out wide. The CRX is a little bit wide at the hairpin. Ford's going to draw alongside on the exit. Fulvia has again got the acceleration. None of us can really match the acceleration of the CRX. Again, actual top speed wise, my Civic will be going quicker, but because the CRX is so light, he's got that initial drive away from us. Now the Focus is under threat from the very, very very fast Civic as we head down towards the hairpin for the final time, but I'm too late on the brakes. I can't quite get the Civic stopped. The Ford's up the inside. I'm stuck around the outside with a car that doesn't handle very well. I try everything I can, but it is not enough to fend off that focus. The Ford would end up with second. CRX claiming victory. I would have to settle for third. The Fulvia ending up in fourth. Yeah, it was a, a hell of an exciting final, <laughs> final couple of laps for us. A good fun, good fun battle for the lead. Further back, as I said, this, <laughs> this group fought for near enough the entirety of the race. The red CRX would drop off the tail end of it. The Duke finding a way past the Civic on the final lap at the hairpin. However, the Honda, again, another Civic with more straight line speed as we head down towards this hairpin. All about getting that braking zone right. It's such a difficult, difficult one to uh, get the cars stopped in time. Both of these drivers, though, do a good job. The Civic running a little bit wide. It's almost enough. It's just enough to give the Duke a bit of hope, but it's not quite enough to get the Nissan alongside as they round the final corner. Nothing more that the Nissan can do, and the Civic would hold on to claim the position to the, uh, the podium. Shadow Shifter taking victory with that uh, CRX TR. King Copper with the focus in second. My Civic claiming third. For our third and final race, unfortunately no replays were saved from all of this. So we only have the onboard footage from my Civic. Uh, two races in this session I would start from dead last. But <laughs> Silverstone I started dead last and as we head to, to the uh, Suzuka full circuit I would find my Civic at the back. Now this wasn't a track that I was particularly relishing with my car. I knew it was going to be a little bit painful. There were a couple of longer straights for it to enjoy but it was going to be painful through the S's. It was manic at the start. A couple of cars get tipped sideways, boot it to save it, and create so much tyre smoke, you're often driving blind through these turns. The poor Omni ends up out wide across the grass. The Clio in a bit of trouble as well. It's trying to fit three cars into one space, doesn't go. I was understeering wide. I think I had a help from a Civic as well. You just end up underneath the wings of the cars ahead of you, and you can't quite see the track. So easy to make silly little mistakes, silly little bumps, and so on. Uh, yeah, unfortunate. Not the best of starts for me. It would see me right down at the very back with the rest of the field running away up ahead. I'd make a further mistake on this opening lap that would drop me a long way back from the field, and well, not much would happen. Not much would happen until lap four. I'd gradually work my way catching back up to some of the vehicles around. My car wasn't great at this circuit. That was very, very apparent. Uh, there were some other cars that were struggling. This Omni was not having a huge amount of fun here. Uh, was 
bit of a handful through the corners. I had the acceleration on the Omni. It was actually a faster car than mine in a straight line. I didn't realize just how much brutal speed the vehicle would have as we leave Spoon Corner. Yeah, if my car is better handling than something, you know that something is in trouble as we're up towards 130 on now. The Omni does not want to go around the outside there. If you're in a car that's struggling, especially high-powered front-wheel drive cars likely to be understeering around the outside at 130R. It's not going to be a fun place. It's not going to be a fun place to put your vehicle. So, yeah, in the end, just position my car where I want it and we'll get the pass done. And a lap later onto the final lap here, I would catch up to the other uh, Civic ahead that uh, was equally struggling. This Civic was better through the corners, but had nothing in the way of straight line speed. And overall, yeah, it was just not massively massively quick exactly the same maneuver that i pulled on the omni better oh, i say better exit out of spoon could get the acceleration out of spoon we'll be able to out drag the civic this time is going to be more of a challenge for me in that i'd get ahead i knew i was always going to pass the car before we got to 130r but i couldn't afford to make a mistake at 130r i couldn't afford to run wide i was a little bit early on the brakes i was a little bit cautious However, the vehicle behind is just too far back and isn't going to be close enough to have a dive into the chicane. I run a smidge wide, but again, I can cover the inside for the next part of the corner and I can use the acceleration of my vehicle. I can just park it on the inside and I know I'll outdrag said Civic down towards the finish line. Not the most exciting of races. Sometimes that is just the way that it would uh, it would go. It's a shame because the guys at the front I know were having an incredible battle. I'd love to have had the replay footage for this one because, uh, yeah, I kind of passed a couple of cars for 14th and 13th position and that was the extent of my race. It would be Impega that would go on to take victory with the uh, Focus Invisible AK in second with uh, Hordes in third. As I said, those guys I know had a very, very close race at the front. I could see that the <laughs> leaderboard position changing regularly but uh, sadly no replays survived of that one my civic was not particularly great i, I figured that the honda being a very good front wheel drive handling car to begin with i could slap a load of power in it and hope that it would hold itself together well enough it didn't really work it was quick at a you know at the azaria north circuit just because it had enough straights to utilize the power of the honda as soon as it started to get to corners it did struggle and truth be told there were better cars at yas Marina as well so overall yeah it wasn't my wasn't my finest build i went a little bit extreme with the build i gave it a go just didn't quite work out in this particular instance that vote is going to be it for this week's Versus the Community. The next one is going to be on Thursday the 7th of December. We are going to be racing with C-Class Japanese cars. If you'd like to take part in that event, you can uh, go to our forums. There will be a link in the description. Find the Fowl Race Versus the Community thread and you can sign up in there. That vote is going to be it from me. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, uh, goodbye.